Critics are bashing Rebel Moon to pieces, whilst audiences seem to be doing the opposite. Get over and follow our movie news. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Rebel Moon. This is episode 18, and today is all about Rotten Tomatoes, the site I strongly disagree with, and feel has been overused to judge whether or not a film is good, specifically the critics. I think as time has gone on, critics have moved further and further away from how the general public judges movies, and so there is a large gap between what critics claim are good or bad films and what audiences claim are good or bad films. When I was a kid. So today we will be talking about what critics thought of Rebel Moon as well as audiences and how and why they are contrasting one another. They did one not thing like to it. note is that it was recently reported that a PR firm were bribing some lower level critics to leave positive reviews on Rotten Tomatoes for a movie. The PR firm does hmm. deny it, but Rotten Tomatoes had to remove a sudden influx of positive reviews as they deemed it suspicious. Uh. So that on its own makes me question the legitimacy of the critics score. So I don't really listen to what critics say I'll trust them more than feel they're very out of touch with how audiences perceive movies. The scores I trust more are the audience scores but only to get a bit of an understanding as to how audiences generally found it. I won't let that score decide if I go see a movie or let that score decide for me if the movie is good. That's the right. final judgment is always my own. And if I was working for a studio and it was my job to decide whether or not to continue making those movies or shows, I would simply look at the viewership or box office and the audience reviews. I'd completely ignore the critics because I think they are now so out of touch with how audiences perceive <laughs> movies and take up such a small amount of the total audience that they aren't worth worrying about. And if you believe that Brian reports, then there's another reason to not worry about them. That's a very and small when amount you take of them a look at the critics' us. reviews for Rebel Moon, you can see how unprofessional some of them are. They don't talk about actual criticisms of the movie, which I would be all ears for, but instead they focus on criticising Snyder or his fan base, which mm. has nothing to do with the movie itself. It's like a commentator criticising a team's like performance, but their criticism is targeted towards the fans of the team, rather than how the team performed on the pitch. Mm. It's an entirely irrelevant point that only proves the bias They're they They're just have. mad that like we got review from Zack Kyle Snyder's Wilson, Justice League done. Said, Everyone but the release the Snyder Cut fanboys would be better off immediately ejecting this turgid whimper of a movie into the farthest reaches of the galaxy. Now, I won't bother to read the rest of his review because just in this summary, you can see his mindset. How can we trust a so-called critic a who allows his hatred of a director's <laughs> fan base to influence his opinion on the movie? Another critic called Owen Gleiberman said this... Rebel Moon, while eminently watchable, is a movie built so entirely out of spare parts that it may, in the end, be for Snyder cultists only. Another clear <laughs> hatred for Snyder's fans. An actual professional has called Snyder fans cultists. Not just the Twitter trolls who label anyone who likes Snyder's films as cultists, but an actual professional critic called his fans cultists. If that doesn't show you his agenda and lack of professionalism, then I don't know what will. He already has a hatred for his fans, and I'm not saying because it's negative we should ignore it, because there are genuine fair criticisms of the movie that I will go into in a minute. But these specific critics are so clearly focused on their hatred towards Snyder or his fan base. Wish I had got to see it in the theater. The movie itself. But sure, fans are going to be biased. I did. It's not their profession. So, unless they send me a screener, Mark Olson like they did for better than these other critics did. He um, said, Army of the, the Dead is too invested in I'll table have to setting. See Guys fully see enjoyed on its own, at times feeling more like a studio presentation deck than a piece of organic storytelling. That's a fair summary. He's okay. making sure his criticism of Rebel Moon is the film itself. His focus isn't on hating the fan base. He felt it was too focused on setting things up than an organic story. And that's fair enough. I have no issue with him not liking the film. He did it in a fair way that talks about the movie rather than his fans. Unfortunately, Mark's professionalism is the minority of these critics. But even then, I'm not worrying about what critics say about this movie or any movie for that matter, because I think they judge movies very differently to audiences and fans. Their way of judging a film just doesn't appeal to me or most of the general audience. True. At the moment, the critic score is on 24%, meaning out of the 42 reviews, 
24% of them were positive. But now let's look at what audiences think about A Child of Fire. Currently, the audience score is on 71%. Okay. So a big jump from the critics' rating. This score will still fluctuate, and it's important right. to note that the audiences who have already seen the movie are most likely Snyder fans or fans of sci-fi. There are select screenings of Rebel Moon in certain parts of the world that only began last night, yeah. meaning that the first people to watch it are probably people invested in Snyder's films or sci-fi in general. Yeah, so you will probably have yeah, a lot of fans know. who automatically love it, which is completely fine. I love that fans are being fans, and they loved the movie, and I'm not saying that their opinion isn't valid. I just want people to know the context behind Come that on, score. Man. There are also many anti-Snyder people out uh, there who have been bashing yeah. the film too. I actually had a conversation with one person on Twitter who claims he attended the LA premiere of the movie, which was invite only, and he said he hated the film. When I questioned him about that, he said a close friend invited him and told me a spoiler from the film as evidence. Unfortunately for him, I had seen Rebel Moon already, and the spoiler he told me was not in fact in the movie. Yeah. The spoiler he had told me was the fake spoiler spreading around the internet yeah, by haters who were trying to See, ruin the film for fans. On you. As soon as I told him that they was can, never in the it, movie, he done. deleted his comments and blocked me. Yeah. So there are those strange <laughs> individuals who will make up an entire backstory yep just to try and hate on a film they haven't seen yep. yet. So for as many extreme pro-Snyder fans out there, there are equally as many extreme anti-Snyder fans out there. I like to think they equal each other out, and because of that you can find a fair picture of how general audiences judge the movie. And as time goes on, and as more screenings occur, and the eventual release of the movie on Netflix, the reviews will increase, and the score will change, which will give us a more accurate depiction of how audiences feel about Rebel Moon. Now, I have always ignored what critics think of the film, and I always will. Some of my favourite movies of all time have been movies that critics have hated, and some of my worst movies of all time have been loved by critics. I've just come to learn that critics judge movies very differently to the average moviegoer, they do. which is fine, but it just means I don't take any notice They're of like their They're like coffee reviews. snobs and or the wine tasters. the reason why I'm even talking it's about this in today's video <laughs> is because people seem to be panicking because of what critics have said. I'm not I would panicking. personally recommend, if you're going to worry or take into account what people think about Rebel Moon or any movie, then I would listen to the audience score and fans. I think they have a yeah. more accurate opinion to yours than critics do. Yeah. Now, I did see Rebel Moon again last night and was able to and get I a review like a fan. opinion I don't review on the like movie. A so whilst I did enjoy it a second time and I still really like the movie, I do have issues with it and they became more obvious this time. Firstly, it felt like time was wasted on certain scenes when we could have explored more about this universe or the story. By no means did it ruin the movie or damage the story, but I think whilst it was important to set the scene and really build the beginning of this movie, once a certain thing happened, I think it could have really accelerated to allow us to explore this universe a bit more than it did. Another thing is that watching it for a second time really made me realise that I just don't like the soft focus lens used. It felt like when you've just woken up abruptly and you rub your eyes and things look a bit blurry. It's a cool artistic <laughs> style, but I think it would have been far better off just being used for the flashback scenes to give a bit of a hazy feeling to it. Mm. Like we don't know the full picture and we're just getting a glimpse of the past, but when we're back in the present day, I want to see that really crisp look. I miss Snyder's visual style from Batman v Superman and the Snyder Cut. The sharpness there is something I miss. Another thing I miss is Larry Fong or Fabian Wagner's cinematography. Snyder did a good job, but he is a brilliant director and a good cinematographer. Whereas Fong and Wagner are brilliant cinematographers. And Snyder's visuals with their cinematography has been a perfect mix. So I would like to see either one of them return for the third movie if possible but I think Snyder's cinematography would have looked better if we returned to the crisp camera lens. I won't go into spoilers, but I do feel a few characters felt wasted. I wanted to see more of them, but we didn't spend much time with them. And whilst I love his slow motion, and I'm a huge fan of slow motion in general, I felt like some of it just wasn't needed. It worked well in the action sequences, but sometimes it felt like it was just there for the sake of it. I loved it when we went from a high intensity action scene to a slow motion shot and then back to the high intensity. But it really did feel weird to go from a normal speed conversation to a slow motion shot of seeds being thrown onto the ground and then back to a normal speed conversation. 
There's a time and a place for the slow motion, and that's an example of when I don't think it's needed. The final thing is that there were the many elements motion. inspired by other sci-fi ever. slash fantasy movies, and you could really feel it. I think if we didn't waste time on some scenes that could have been wrapped up quicker, we could have had more time showing off how unique this universe is. And I'm sure that fresh identity will be shown in the director's cuts and part two, but there were many elements that felt like other movies. The difficulty with Snyder's films is that the director's cuts have always been better than the original cuts, and finally seeing the movie, mm. it feels like the director's cuts would have helped with a lot of issues I have, which makes me question why they didn't just release the director's cuts as the full movie. The Batman was three hours long and was successful, and mm. so did Oppenheimer. A three mm. hour long Rebel Moon movie on streaming I think would do well and would help the movie a lot. I was hoping that because Snyder had decided to cut a shorter version together then the movie would be great as I think was, a movie should the be director's as long as cuts it's would just have been be. a bonus. Yeah, but you could feel that yeah. things were missing because Snyder likes to take his time to tell a story. So going from one scene that takes its time to another scene that feels like a lot is missing feels strange. It's noticeable that things are missing and that's something you don't want audiences to feel. But I still enjoyed the movie. I'd bump it down to a 7 out of 10, but I still liked it. It's no cinematic masterpiece, and I would still watch his DC movies over this one, but sure that's because I'm a DC fan and love week. those movies so much. <laughs> it would be very difficult to get better than those films for me, but this is definitely my favourite non-DC Snyder movie, and I'm really intrigued to see where it goes next. Mm. So if you've seen the movie now, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. And I make sure not. to let me know what you guys think of You're the Rotten Tomatoes score too. There seems to be a real divide between critics and audience scores. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye. <laughs> well, sir, thank you for giving your input on it. You sounded unbiased, but you sound like a fan. That's unbiased, you know. You might have had your problems with it, but you like the movie, so it's good. Um, I'm definitely waiting to see it myself I'll probably end up doing a reaction to it <laughs> uh, yeah so it, it should be a good time it'll be up on Patreon and YouTube memberships when it comes out <sighs> so I personally always look at the audience score then the critic score I mean, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes, you know, the critics are valid and they have been right. But usually, um, I don't agree with the critics. I, I usually always agree more with most movies with the fan score, with the audience score. So, you know, but with all the debacles of Metacritic and um, Rotten Tomatoes, Captain Marvel and The Last of Us Part 2 and all this stuff, I just don't trust these companies anymore. So it is what it is. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm the one that needs to enjoy a movie to buy it and have fun and put it in my library and talk about it, you know, and, you know, uh, that's what matters to me. I don't care who else liked it or didn't like it. As long as I liked it, we are good. 10 billion subscribers.